Hey guys, and welcome to Top Channel 101. And today we're going to be making this uh, 3D product placement visual effect here. So let's jump in. Uh, here's the project file. You can see what we are working with. And uh, the animation is super, super easy. And uh, yeah. So let's uh, start with the motion tracking part. Uh, if you don't have this motion tracking tab, just go under this plus here and go to VFX, add the motion tracking tab which will look like this. I got this uh, video. It will be in, included in the project file, which you can get on my Patreon page and, and uh, my Gamrod page. Links are going to be in the description, but now I'll be leaving links in the description to that footage. Uh, so all you have to do is add some tracking points and uh, motion tracking in Blender is really, really easy, especially if you have good footage. Uh, this uh, footage has a lot of points you can track. I can see I put most of my tracking on this building. For some reason, if you add too many tracking points out there, I think because the, the resolution in the far distance is not uh, great, uh, you, you get a very high solve error. Uh, so you want to go for something that is less than one. Here you can see we have 0 0.17, which is really, really good. All you have to do is find a point, uh, like say, and um, this building has a tunnel point. So this corner here, you can see here, this all these are uh, er potential tracking areas. So you can just add a point like that using control and then click. And then you just uh, press this track markers and uh it's a very short footage uh, so you should see it should track very fast and you can see you can scrub through a timeline to, to make sure that uh, the tracking are not going off you add as many tracking points as you want uh just make sure that they are good tracking points and then click the solve camera yeah when you solve the camera you can check the solve error if it's above one try adding more control points or more tracking points or remove some of the bad ones. After you're done with the tracking, you, you need to convert these tracking points into uh, 3D points or mesh points. So you go under reconstruction and then 3D markers to mesh that will turn them into a mesh. Yeah, tracks like this. Uh, let's go back to the layout and take a look at that. Okay, so I know that uh, since we are tracking a building, a building has to be straight, uh, has to be straight. So if for some reason, your tracking points are, are pointing this direction or pointing this direction. Select the camera and rotate them until they are standing upright as a building should be. Because we know that uh, we tracked uh, this point, this point, this point of this building. So they should be uh, straight uh, like that. So I just made sure to rotate them so that when I place anything on these points, is also straight up like that. If I want to add a cube like this, a great way to make sure that it's where I want, uh, say I can find a tracking point. Uh, let me first hide some of these objects. I can find a tracking point, like say the one I'm using is uh, here. Use my cursor to select it, to have my cursor there and uh, select this cube and put it there. Uh, the issue I'm having is that uh, the, the origin of this cube is in the center and I want this edge this corner here to be there. So what I do is, is just change the pivot point to that corner there and I just have the 3D cursor here, the pivot point there. Uh, so now if I move my 3D cursor at that point and move this object to that point, you see it lines up correctly. Now then try to line up the edges of this building with the edges. T try to line up your, your cube with uh, the building you're trying to track. And now you can see that it matches correctly. One thing you have to make sure to do is uh, Go, scroll down in your tracking and set background and set up tracking uh, scene as well to add the camera and the background to your scene and also it will add it in the compositor it will set up these nodes uh, for you for what we are going to do it's it usually adds uh, a foreground and background layer and uses an alpha over node uh, just like this here so you have the background and foreground i found that that doesn't really work very well it, it ends up render having to render twice uh, for the background and the foreground and turn off single layer. So it will render the background and the foreground. So it will render twice your scene, which slows down at the computer. But so if you have this setup, just uh, remove it and uh, make sure you're only rendering the foreground. And so your setup looks like this. Uh, you have an alpha over node and uh, the foreground is uh, the only one that is going into that. And here in the view layer just make sure you're rendering single layers 
so that you're not rendering two layers. Yeah, so what I want is when this is animated to go inside, I want, so I will delete this face. I want it to go into the inside, uh, but I don't want, let's see, let's see. I don't want this part of the building to show, this this side of this cube to show. Uh, so for that, all you have to do is go to the object properties under visibility and turn on shadow culture. Now you can see that we are not rendering the cube and when this enters the cube, it's occluded, like it's entering the building. But we still want to see the, inter the interior of uh, the cube. So I'm just going to shift D and I'm um, also going to go into edit mode and use Alt S so that I can shrink this or scale it down uh, so that it's, in, it's inside the original cube. And now I can turn on turn off shadow culture. That way I can see, I, I can still see the interior of this. And that's how you get something like that, that renders on the inside, but not the outside. So on the outside, it's just like that. And now it looks like we have a hole inside that cube. And uh, now you can add in mater any materials you want. So I can make this blue or whatever you want, or you can even, even add some textures. Let me use my texture folder add-ons texture folder and see if I have some wood or wood texture. Let me grab this. Yeah, that can also work. In my final render, you will notice that I even have light bouncing off the building, uh, which is a nice touch. It makes our scene feel part of the original footage, really integrated in the footage. And uh, uh, you can even see this, some reflections of the objects are uh, depending on how much reflections you want. So let me just uh, do this. You can bring back this and uh, make it even more reflective, make it metallic. And yeah, you can see that this can also act as a reflection if you wanted that. Add that, uh, say for example, I want maybe a billboard here. Yeah, so I'm going to add a texture to it. Uh, and since everything is tracked, yeah, this is also now part of the scene. We want this area here to also have light on it, like this area uh, from here. And maybe some of the road should have some light on it. So to do that, uh, since we have some tracking points already, uh, we have uh, this tracking point, this tracking point, and this tracking point on the ground. Let's start with the ground one. Uh, I can go here in the layout and uh, find that tracking point. So I just have to look for the track object so this here uh, basically the object that is created when you do the reconstruct uh, uh, the reconstruction 3d markers to mesh go to that make sure i'm in vertex mode select that cursor selected and add a plane scale it down and uh, i want part of the road to reflect uh, the billboard so i'm going to just add a loop there and maybe add a loop And uh, if your, your viewport doesn't match your track, make sure that uh, first of all, you have uh, the scale set to fit so that the image is always scaled in the viewport to match your viewport area. And uh, you also need to make sure that your, your camera matches your viewport area so that things line up correctly. Yeah, so the, the road seems to track correctly, so that's good. We need to give this the same material as our road. So what I can do is come here and uh, first make sure I'm only viewing the footage. So you just preview the footage by holding down control and clicking on this scale and render this image. Render image as you uh, make sure that the dimensions are correct. So I'll make sure that this is 100% and viewport render image. So it will render it like that and I'll go under save image as and let me call this three and after rendering make sure you don't change the frame you are on because that's the frame we have rendered and now I can give this object a material and bring in that texture so image texture and I just I was three and do a UV map unwrapping but use projection from view that should unwrap this uh, and project and now if you if you look at this texture uh why is this not okay yeah so if you look at this image now it has the projection of this of this texture now the only issue we're going to have here is that uh the road has cars moving and this is a a, a, sim, a single frame so if we play uh, this is not going to show but it doesn't really matter that much since we are mostly interested in 
uh, reflections of this so uh, we can look at this and uh, I'm going to just fake the light from here. Uh, I'm just going to use an area light and rotate it. Just make sure it is around here and uh, also use this as the base. So if I look at this, give it a, a bluish color. So let, let me bring in, let me make this really pop. So let me say 100. So you can see that blue light, that's what we want. But we also have these sharp edges that we need to get rid of. Let me add some extra detail here. And uh, whenever you edit this, you also need to make sure you are uh, unwrap again to project from view. So we have that, we even, we can see the light. We just don't want it to be too much. Actually, uh, you should try to find an image that will give off good light. Uh, I want something that is, that has enough color in it. Let's try this and just switch that texture with that. So. So that my light can be red. That way it looks like this is what is projecting that light there. So now I, ca I don't want these sharp edges here because uh, right now if you look at it here, you see those sharp edges. What you can do to remove that is just subdivide this quite a lot. Let me just do it in viewport here. Then you can go to vertex paint and just paint these areas, these paint the edges. Cause we don't want to see hard edges. So now what we can do is bring in that mask we have just painted and that's under attributes. Uh, it's, it should be called, uh, it's called color it attribute. Let me just call it C for color uh, so that I can easily find it here. Okay, it's here. Now if I look at that mask, it looks like that. It's good enough. So I can just plug this into the alpha channel. And if I look at this now, you can see we just have that portion. Maybe use our RGB curves, bump this up or shrink the mask if you want. Uh, so if we bring this, so you can see the light and it's too much. It's, it's standing out too much. So I can, you can just make it less. So that's what I did uh, for this here. You can see I have this mesh here. I just added a point there and, and then extruded it to the shape of this building. If you wanted this to be on this building, which I think would be more realistic, uh, you can find again your, uh, this tracks points. And I have a nice one here, here. So I can use that shift D and extrude it Yeah, so that's how you do that. Uh, you track and uh, if you want detail uh, reflections here and here, like I have here, you do that. Uh, the way I admitted the cube to scale is uh, I, s I just used a hook object. So when you have, uh, so this, this is what I have and uh, this face is deleted. So all I did is uh, just select this face, use Ctrl H to hook a new object and animated this, this hook to extend and collapse like that. That's how I got that animation. Yeah, so everything else was just simply animating things around uh, and uh, we ended up with what we have. Yeah, so you can see the different projections I created here for to capture the reflections and this here. So thanks for watching. If you want to check out the project files, links are going to be in the description.